Hey everyone, Rich here. Today I'm going to be making digital abstract artwork using Procreate on the iPad Pro. I'll be explaining and showing you my whole process, so feel free to follow along. But before we get started, I wanted to address the elephant in the room, which is NFTs and crypto art. If you haven't heard about this, I'm also new to the subject, but in my understanding, now digital artworks can be verified and authenticated on the blockchain network so they can hold their value much like a physical, one-of-a-kind painting can or sculpture can. So I think this is a great thing for digital artists. And like I said, I'm no expert on the subject, so down below I'll link some videos of people who can explain better than I can what NFTs are. And always remember, before starting something new, do your research. Anyways, let's get started. Yeah, let's get started. So you're gonna to wanna to open Procreate if it's not already open. You're gonna go into gallery if it's not already there. And you're gonna create a new canvas size. So I'm gonna go with screen, sky, screen size today, but you can select anything you want over here. Choose your orientation. Recently I've been interested in creating vertical pieces, so that's what I'm gonna do. But either is fine. Now go into brushes. You're gonna to wanna to select airbrushing and increase the size of the soft brush. So this brush over here. After you do so, I'm gonna go with a vibrant color. You can pick anything you want. And I'm just gonna tone the background. I'll add a few tones, just slightly going around and around. Until I'm satisfied. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So now I'm gonna start with some sketching. I'm gonna choose a new color, vibrant as well. I'm gonna make the marks that make me feel happy. Remember this is about your enjoyment, so just do whatever feels good, feels nice, and it'll work out in the end. Only you can make the marks you're making, so I wouldn't stress too much if you feel like they're not right or they're not perf perfect, but... And then you might find out they're actually... they were perfect, so... Just keep going and don't worry too much. Of course, yeah, there's no harm in going back or changing what you did if it doesn't speak to you in your visual language. But yeah, I'm happy with those line marks. I'm gonna select a new color. Actually, I think I'm going to go back into airbrushing. I want to add some transparent spheres around the area of different sizes and different colors. And all you're doing right now is keep building up layer by layer. New marks kind of palette of colors, shapes, and whatnot. And you're gonna keep going until you're happy with how it speaks to you compositionally. So how it looks on the paper, on the canvas. This is all done in one layer, so you don't have to worry about making new layers. Now this is one of my favorite brushes actually. So over here, it's the water pen. And yeah, it's a very soft, milky kind of brush and it mixes the color a little bit, what's underneath. So you can get some very beautiful lines, some beautiful action going on. But yeah. I always stress this, but you don't need to follow stroke by stroke. Do what makes you happy. See what your body wants to say. That's probably right. And always feel free to go back to what you were using before. So we're using pencil underneath, but I'll do some more pencil marks on top as well. And that usually adds a nice consistency between the layers you're building up to always go back. And back into airbrush again. Yeah, I like that. And now for another one of my favorite brushes, it's the oil paint brush in Procreate. So select this one, it's in painting. Oops, that was a mistake. And again, choose a color you want to use. 
I'm gonna go with a large size for the brush, make a powerful stroke, just above everything else. I'm gonna change the color a bit, and give that stroke. Some friends. Yeah. Then you can continue this playing with different brushes, keep adding marks and colors until you're satisfied. I think this piece is almost there. But we'll see. One of the favorite things I like to do is keep making these concentric circles using a round brush, layering them on top of each other. Later you'll see it creates a very cool, a cool, how should I say, a cool effect when we play with the curves. Yeah, actually, I think this is pretty good. So the next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into gallery and you're gonna duplicate this piece. So you'll slide to the left and hit duplicate. And make sure to accept any feedback from your cat. Constructive criticism is always welcome. So now you have your piece duplicated and now you're gonna go and edit it. So to edit it, you need to select this wand on the top left and you're gonna go into curves, which will be hidden under your cat's paw. So we can wait. Not that one, Bobby. Yeah. So you're gonna to wanna to select this one, curves, and go into layers. In curves, you're gonna see there are three main color blocks. On the lead we on the right we have our warmer colors, the yellows and the reds. This piece is very warm already, so they're the highest. Greens in the middle, blues in the left. So let me show what this does. This process it's gonna change the colors on the layer and you can it can help you get access to new colors that were hidden from you or color combinations that didn't occur to you while you were painting so yeah if you invert it it'll get very high in the blues oh now that's all white because it's all light and yeah now this painting became a cold painting with a blue focus and always i like to shrink down the size of the canvas it helps you see the colors better and not get distracted by your marks but let's continue so you can add dots along this line and you can kind of create a roller coaster to see what color combinations you can get. So I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna go back into gallery and I'm gonna duplicate it one more time and repeat the same process.
So I'm quite happy with this and let me show you what's next. So you'll have two finished pieces. You can repeat that even one more time if you want to get wackier with uh, the color combinations. But out of these three pieces, I'm the happiest with the second, the final uh, color experiment. So I'm going to go into this wrench-like tool and I'm going to export the image as a JPEG. I'm going to save that image to my photos folder. So I'll go into folders, sorry, photos, and I'll open up that image. We have it here. And now I'm going to edit. On the edit, you can hit this auto and it'll kind of color correct the hues, the contrast, and the light and darkness of the image. But to be honest, I actually like it where it's a little bit darker than the color corrected version. You can also go into here and look at the filters and see how it modifies your artwork. You can select anyone which you feel brings out the potential or the best face of your creation. But your creation might already be perfect without any of the filters. Sometimes it is for me, sometimes it isn't. So I like this one the most, I'm gonna go with this. Now, yeah, well it's done and it's finished. And there you have it, there's your artwork. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. I'll see you next time. Bye.